God's creation is in verse one, and God's recreation begins with verse three. It doesn't say that God made the heavens, nor that God formed the earth. It says that God created the heavens and the earth. Creation proves the existence of God. Creation declares the glory of God, proving that there is a God. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament, the expanse, shows His handiwork. Although God's divine power and Godhead are invisible things, man can understand them by the things that were made. Man can understand and is without excuse. Look at creation. How can we say there is no God? Life study of Genesis, message two: Satan's rebellion and corruption. Satan's rebellion and corruption. We come to the matter of Satan's rebellion and corruption. That we should now study this subject may come as a surprise. We have been considering God's creation, and suddenly we turn to Satan's rebellion. What does this mean? We must approach this matter with a sober mind in order that we may be crystal clear. Many good Christians think that Genesis one one is the subject of the first two chapters of Genesis. They were taught that these two chapters are a record of God's creation, and that chapter one verse one is the subject. But if verse one is the subject, how can verse two start with end? N means that something is going on already, and then something else happens to follow it. N is a conjunction which combines two things. The first thing goes, and the second thing comes. Even the grammar shows that verse one is not the subject, but part of the description. It describes the first event in the series. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and this means that after God created, something happened. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth became vast and empty. And concordant version of Genesis translates the words this way: Yet the earth became a chaos and vacant. The concordant version does not say. And he says, "Yet, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Yet the earth became a chaos and vacant. A chaos is a mess. The earth became a chaos, vast and vacant. If you build some apartments and no one dwells in them, they are vacant. We may render this phrase as either a chaos and vacant, or vast and empty." Something happened between verse one and verse two, which caused the earth to become vast and empty. The origin of Satan. Satan was an angel created by God before he created the earth. The book of Job tells us that when God laid the measure of the foundation of the earth, the sons of God, the angels, shouted for joy. This proves that God created the angels before he created the earth. From Ezekiel twenty-eight, we see that Satan was not only one of the angels, but the highest archangel, the head of all the angels. Ezekiel twenty-eight describes Satan's position in the universe before his rebellion and corruption. This whole chapter seems to speak about the king of Tyre, but verse thirteen says, "Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God." If we read the context, we can see that this was not the Eden in which Adam was put. This Eden was not on the earth, but in the heavens, on the holy mountain of God.